Sergeant J.D. Nelson with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office and we're here at Canyon Middle School as part of the Urban Shield exercise. How many years has Urban Shield been going and what is, uh, what is it for? This is the sixth year for Urban Shield and this is a large scale real life uh, tactical exercise, an emergency service exercise uh, to help prepare us for any uh, event that may happen uh, in the Bay Area. Who are some of the agencies that are here this year? Well, there's 31 different teams that go through 32 different scenarios, uh, and we take uh, all the scenarios that have happened worldwide, try to replicate them here at Urban Shield and, and put the tactical teams through that. We also have uh, many fire uh, departments here, so they go through an exercise as well as bomb squads. So it's it's all encompassing. What are some of the, uh, give us a couple examples of some of the scenarios that are uh, you know, different things, active shooters, uh, the one here at Canyon is a, a school shooting. Uh, so things that have happened in the United States, um, you know, unfortunately had a situation in Colorado, uh, twice now in Colorado. We try to replicate that so that our tactical teams, uh, if confronted with that, will we'll be ready. How you feel? Good. I feel great. The way that it breaks down is the SWAT team the way that it's laid out is they are an eight person SWAT team and they're currently at training in all the gear that they're wearing. They get detailed to an active shooter, meaning there is a shooting that's currently occurring at this high school. They're the first ones to arrive. They have no additional resources and they have to deal with what unfolds based on some of the intelligence. What they're viewing is a 3D layout of this campus and the areas that they're going to be operating in. And the way that it's relayed is they're actually viewing this while they're driving to the scene. So from there, they're going to get their weapons, and then they're going to get the briefing. So what we're doing here is we're doing basically what's called a guiding line rappel. You know, every SWAT team is comfortable rappelling, very standard rappel, very simple kind of approach. We're doing here something a little more advanced. There are times when just rappelling down a building is not okay enough. You have to actually get out here. So we have a big tree down in the way here. So what's happening is we're having them rappel. We're using a separate guiding line that's actually going to pull them out away from the wall about 40 feet so they clear the obstruction. Or it might be an alleyway between them and a building over here they want to get on so that rappel line the guiding line pulls them out of way while they're lowering themselves we control the guiding line and we can lower them from here as well 
So we have kind of both the rappel going on and the guiding line. They rappel down, pull out away, and we set them down basically right where we want them. So it's kind of, it's mostly new for these folks. It's, it's more of a mountain rescue kind of technique, but it does have tactical, practical applications. So that's what we're showing these guys here. Who are you and where are we at? Uh, so I am uh, I'm the interim fire chief, Demetrius Schaefer, and uh, we are at the our San Leandro training grounds for the Alameda County Fire Department. Uh, so today is uh, what we call Fire Ops 101, and it's all about uh, taking our elected officials and, and, and those that have a, some sort of governance role or impact on the fire department, uh, bringing them out, getting them suited up in our turnouts and our gear, giving them an opportunity to see what our crews do on a daily basis, getting them in, uh, in some fire, getting them to do some auto extrication, some search and rescue, get them to do some medical. Um, so it's a pretty awesome opportunity. Yeah. What we're going to simulate for you today is this is going to be um, either like a strip mall or some commercial occupancy. And with the truck company's job on a call like that is to get to the roof as fast as we can, cut a hole in the roof to let all the hot gases out. That way the engine crews with the hose and water can get inside and put the fire up. It's a coordinated effort. The longer we take on the truck, the longer it's going to take for them to get into the building and find the fire and put the fire out. Okay, which also means more time for searching for rescue. It, it's just all coordinated and the truck's right in the middle of it all. Now one of the downsides we have in Alameda County Fire is we have three people per truck. And we're going to show you today, for just this simple operation, you could probably use four or five. But we make it work with three. take the, the roof off so we're gonna go ahead and hook up some tools here we got firefighter two we win here he's gonna go ahead and assist Hi, I'm Sean Wilson. I'm from Alameda County Supervisor Office of Scott Haggerty. And um, was this your first time doing the fire ops? This was my first time. Well, how was it? Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was it was a great lesson on what our firefighters go through day in and day out. What do you what you what you do today? Name some of the things you did. Gosh, I walked up a ladder. I went into a burning building. I located a, a body in a mist of smoke. And uh, the last thing we did was uh, take a rooftop off of the, off a car. Has has this um, changed or altered your per, uh, your perception of what firefighters do? Yeah, abs absolutely. I think 100. percent You know, you take for granted what they do every day, but actually to be in some of these scenarios, you realize not only the hard work, 
but the, the quick thinking that you have to be able to do, you have to be able to react very very fast, you have to be in great shape, physical condition. So yeah, I, I, this this was very eye-opening for me. I think most elected officials who control funding for, for firefighters should go through a training such as this, and I think everyone would appreciate our firefighters more than they certainly do now.